Joined now by a familiar face to Eagles fans, Jeremy Langwa, former K. Breton Eagles captain who is now a member of the Rinderanda Huskies. Jeremy recently returned from Arizona Coyotes training camp. Jeremy, how excited are you to get this season going with the Huskies? I'm pretty excited. We have a pretty good group, and I'm really excited to bring my experience from last year from the playoffs and the Merrill Cup to this team and see how far we can go this year. Obviously, it was a strong Quebec team you were with last year, but because of that, perhaps you're used to these expectations because a lot of people thinking this Ruin Miranda team is a favorite to win the league this year. Do you guys feel that in the dressing room? How much pressure is there? Yeah, like you said, a bunch of people were thinking we were probably the best team this year. I think all of us within the team, we've all think that too. I think it was a little pressure put by us at the start of the season. I don't think we had the start that we wanted to, but I think things are starting to get in place right now. And I think we're working on every practice, every game. And I think we're in every game too. So it's just a matter of chemistry, I think, and the little details. And I think we'll be a strong team for sure. Chemistry, a big thing there because a number of players like yourself that were not there last year are all getting used mm-hmm. to playing with each other. You spent three and a half years in Cape Breton. How much did you develop as a person in addition to as a player during your time with the Eagles? Because that was a very long key part of your life. It was. I was 15 at the time when I came in, and that was my first time leaving home. It was my first time speaking English as well. I think the game brought me a lot of good things. It made me the man I am today. It helped me, with, like I said, with my English and everything. And I think I was really fortunate to have a billet like Tara. I think Tara Baker was, was a huge part in that. She helped me a lot during my time in Cape for me to become the man I am today, like I said. Cape was a big part of my life, like you said, three years and a half I spent there. It was all pleasure. I really loved it. Obviously, I would have loved to, to spend more time there, but we all know that hockey is a business. And when you're trying to get far, sometimes you got to leave some places that you want to stay. But I loved Cape and I still love it to this day. And I think I will love it forever. What stands out from your time on the ice? Any games or moments in particular from your three and a half years that you really fondly remember from Cape Breton? It was pretty hard since we had COVID and everything, but I think even though we weren't that good my last two years I spent there, I think the fans were still cheering for us, even though we're losing in games and stuff like that. So the thing that comes to my mind for that question is really the fans, how they've been behind us this whole time, even though it was a tough time for us. Certainly special when you get loyal support, even if times are not the greatest. Now, Mm -hmm. In addition to getting a chance to contend for a championship, Quebec City is your home. It's where it started because you were drafted by the Eagles. Just how cool was it to wear the Ramparts jersey after you grew up watching the Ramparts? It was amazing. That's the least I can say. It was just crazy to think that I was watching that team playing while I was growing up. It was always my dream to be a part of the Ramparts and to have that chance to wear that jersey and play in front of my friends and family. And in that big year that they were going for everything too, it was just such an honor for me and such a privilege. I think every hockey player wishes for it, and I had the chance to, to have it and to experience it. How much did your game change going to Quebec? Because in Cape Breton, particularly the year prior, but even to a degree last year, where there weren't as many veteran players, maybe you had a little bit more responsibility, maybe a little bit pressure to do too much. How different was it playing in Quebec alongside a pretty veteran team? It was really nice. I think in Cape, my role was mostly take the rookies and just show them the way, how it's done junior level and everything like that. But when I got to Quebec, like you said, we had a pretty good team, pretty good veterans as well. And just defensively, we had a good core. My role kind of changed. I didn't have to, to show the rookies anymore because there wasn't a whole lot. But I was just myself there, and I think everyone was their own selves. And I think that's what made us so good. We all had our roles, and I think we stuck to it. That's what happened at the end. That's why we won. And just describe how special it was to win those two trophies. And really, in dominant fashion, you win decisively <laughs> in the Memorial Cup final and only lost two games in the Q playoffs. Yeah, it's amazing. When when I'm thinking about it, it's crazy how we only lost two games in the playoffs. We swept the first three rounds against teams that people were thinking that they had a chance to beat us. I think everyone was thinking that in playoffs we were going to get beat by physicality and everything, but I think we showed everyone wrong that actually we could be uh, physical as well and everything. And I think in the Mem Cup, we just showed that we were the best team throughout Canada and even the States, just throughout the CHL. And I think even in the final, we won 5 nothing. I don't think that was a close game. Yeah, you definitely left no doubts. Talking to Jeremy Langlois, current Huskies defenseman and former Eagles defenseman. We know you have high expectations for your team, but for you as well, your draft hit by the Arizona Coyotes. Compare the pressure in your draft year versus now when you're drafted and you're trying to earn a contract. Is it similar? I think the pressure is bigger right now. Obviously, getting drafted is, is something big, but you still have a couple of years after to get noticed by teams. Right now, I think the pressure is more I'm trying to show them that I can earn a contract, that they have to sign me. So I think the pressure now is just to be good every day and 
trying to improve the things that they want me to improve and show them that I can be the player that they want me to be just so I can earn a contract. But like I said, I think the pressure is a little bit bigger because mostly it's my 20 years, my last year in the queue, and it's my last year to be eligible for that contract too. So the only way I can phrase it is it's this year or nothing. We're certainly going to be rooting for you to get your name signed to paper. The last one last year, your fifth year in the QMJHL. How do you feel you've developed as a player on the ice during that time? It was a big, big change. I just remember when I came in at 16 and I was watching Baker, Lena, McCormick, Bouchard, LaRose, all those guys in front of me. And I was trying to pick some of the things they do in their game and trying to add it up to my game. And I remember I was doing that every game. And I think that's what helped me the most to be the player I am today. I feel more complete, more two-way that I can play on both ends of the ice and be strong on both ends. So I think when I came in, I was mostly offensive. Throughout the years, I think I really improved my defensive side and brought me the player I am today. Fans of Cape Breton enjoyed watching that, and I'm sure fans of Maroon Miranda will this year as well. Best of luck with everything going forward, Jeremy. Really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you very much, buddy. That is former Eagles captain Jeremy Langlois now on the Maroon Miranda Huskies blue line. You're listening to the intermission of Celtic Kubota, Cape Breton Eagles Hockey, 1270 CJCB.